Hi, everyone. Buenas noches. Espero que estén muy bien. Thank you all so much for uh, spending some time with us tonight. My name is Azul Barrientos, and I'm here uh, with another uh, Noche Azul, Todavía en Casa. Um, we're getting close to going back to uh, a live session, a live concert, but for now, um, we're still doing it online. And, um, and you know, as I mentioned before, I think it's a, uh, at this point, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here, and I am. Um, I love trying to take full advantage of the technology that is available to us. And one of the things that I've learned and I love doing is, um, if you have tuned in in the last year, is inviting other artists in another. Um, yeah other uh, people that express their love for culture. And um, today, tonight, is very special because we are mixing something that I, it's very close to my heart. Um, tonight's show is called Agua y Poesia. And, you know, naturally one of the reasons why we're doing poetry this, this month is because it's um, Nationals Poetry Month here in the US and you know that's always beautiful to observe and then water you know agua por qué agua um, i think for a lot of us water is such a such a such a natural way to heal ourselves i will never forget um, my first when i first realized the power of water and the ancient connection that we all uh, have to water was when I was about eight. I was going through a lot of, um, I was going through a difficult time. My body was going through um, trauma and I didn't have the vocabulary or the knowledge to, to know or to explain what was happening to me. And I couldn't even connect, you know, I, I, I really, I think that when, when you're a child and you're going through something like that, you really, you really don't know how to, how to say these things and how to, you know, how to ask for help sometimes. Luckily, my mother realized that something was wrong with me um, and she took me to the doctor and, you know, in their assessment, they, they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't say what was wrong with me, um, but she knew that something was wrong with me, something was going on. So she did um, an ancient uh, ritual, which consists of, um, she gather water, and you know, we're talking Mexico City, so there's no water nearby. And we don't have, you know, in Mexico City, we don't have bathtubs or anything like that. We are lucky to have a shower. So she got one of those, um, she gathered water in one of those little, um, it's, it's not even like a, like a, like a little, little kid's pool. It's just like a little, like a little thing, <laughs> like a, one of those cheap plastic things, um, big enough for a kid to, to, you know, bathe in. And she gathered water and she put that water um, on a certain day, and she let that water um, take a sun bath, and she put um, uh, flowers, flower, petal flowers, she put herbs, and she let it be for a couple of hours, and then she brought me in, and she bathed me in that water. And I will never forget, you know, all the fear I was, I, I had night terrors. I, I was really, you know, I was doing terrible. I had night terrors. I was not doing good in school. I was wetting the bed. I was really, you know, I was, I was about eight. I was really, really out of myself. And, and I felt like I was fading away, you know, as a little kid, that's, that's the best way that I could describe it. And, and that moment, you know, there is a moment when, I started to smell the, 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 the herbs, whatever I was smelling, the flowers, the warmth of the water. My mom started singing songs, praying over me. 
And it went on for a while, you know, so she was singing and praying, singing and praying, and bathing me in this water. And eventually I fell asleep, I think. Um, and I slept for, you know, 24 hours. And I cannot tell you exactly how, but I, I connected to something that was, that was bigger than me, something that was beyond me and beyond my mother and beyond anything I, um, I experienced as a child. It was beyond anything. And it was that healing power that kind of connected me to, I believe that it was something ancestral in me, you know, something that we all can connect to. So um, a couple of times in my life, whenever I felt that, um, that something in me or that my body needs sort of a reset, I, I look for water. And I think we all do that. So um, I am very, very, very lucky and very blessed to have these beautiful sisters, estas hermanas tan hermosas que van a estar esta noche con nosotras, um, and that are a part of, of tonight's um, event. And I'm just going to name them uh, real quick, and then we're going to start. Uh, tonight, we're going to have Carmen Tafoya, Andrea Vocav Sanderson, Emi Perez, Maria Concepcion Bautista Vasquez, Norma Cantú, Lía, la novia Sirena García, Conchi, y Madre Santa Ibáñez. Also, we have my beautiful brothers, Emilio Álvarez, Juan Cabrera, and Andrew Bergman. And we have a little special um, sorpresita at the end. Um, what else? What else? Well, I guess that's it. Um, thank you so much, Esperanza Peace and, Just and Justice Center, for um, presenting this event. And let me know if this light is too harsh because I'm kind of trying something new. So anyway, let's, um, let's start. The first song is, um, is a poem made into a song and is called Esses. Thank you. 
Border Bullets. Rio Grande flows from the Rockies to the Gulf. Holy waters heal the border scar. Pecan, Nogal, Retama. Sway, tower over mesquites y huizaches, buried treasure, brown. Fiery gold crown, sun sets over Mexico. Death defies life. A packed train speeds by, transports precious cargo, arrives with the moonlight. The Rio Grande, Rio Bravo, Scar. Es una herida abierta. Gloria and Saluda. How to heal the border scar? Begin by honoring our ancestors, Los Comecrudo, the Coahuiltecan tribes that came and went, bathed in its waters, survived the raging river. Then honor all who dwell along the border, the many, many beings, the snakes, the cascabel, lechera, y más, cactus mouse, bats, lizards y lagartijos, y algún horny toad. Let the carrizo grow as it may, the zacate flourish and the nacahuita, chaparros y tantos más that offer shade to deer and javali. Honor those who make the river home, the water world of fish and turtles, the minnow, catfish, tadpoles, toads and frogs, along with tortoises, alligators, y tantos más. Those who fly overhead or roam the riverbed, garza, garceta, chachalaca, parauque, lechuza, aguililla, sopilote, gavilán, tortola, Tecolote y tantos más. But above all, honor all humans who come to cross, to wade and swim, to seek to live a better life. All are tied to this water, this healing water, this nourishing water, this killing water, this holy water. <laughs> Amazing Norma Cantu. Um, Norma Cantu is um, is a Chicana postmodernist writer, and um, she was born in Nuevo Laredo, Tamaulipas, Mexico, 
to Florentino Cantu Vargas and Virginia Ramon Becerra. She was raised in Laredo in Webb County, Texas and attended public schools there. Cantu received her um, degree from Laredo Community College in 1970. She received her Bachelor of Science degree in English and Political Science from Texas A&E University at Laredo. She has been on the faculty of Texas A&M International University, the University of Texas at San Antonio, and the University of Missouri, Kansas City. In 2016, she was named the, I don't know how to pronounce this, but I'm gonna give it a try. Murickson mm. Professor of the Humanities at Trinity University. Um, we all love and know um, Professor Cantu, and we thank her from the bottom of our, of our hearts to be a part of tonight's event. Um, and I'm gonna move to the next one.
The next poet um, is Anel Flores, and I'm going to read um, from what she wrote about her writing. She says, in my newest work, I returned to my past life when I didn't have the tools to understand why opposition existed. Born into the, the legitimizing forces of colonization, I aim to highlight the various trajectories I traveled seeking worth. During my process, fingering through scene by scene, I am reminded of the laboring hours, days, and years I have spent and still spend rebuilding, repairing, reclaiming, and examining, and differentiating what is real and what is a trigger, a scar, another break in my life's journey toward identity and gender. My work engages me, the subject, and research in the transitional time travel beyond lifetimes forward and back of identity, while also exploring how said subject embodies their body in the present moment on its spectrum. So here it is, Anel Flores. For Roxana Hernandez, Laguna, mi madre. Laguna, my mother. Rain, river, ocean, stream, run beside me until my legs tire. Take me with you, carry me home, for I don't have to run anymore. Ocean water, I bathed in your waves once with a white bar of soap because I didn't understand Spanish so much back then. Cuando entras el mar, the seer said, limpia todo su cuerpo and she slid her thick black hands up and down her arms, legs, neck, and in circles over her eyes. I used soap because she told me to wash myself, and you cleansed me. You pushed her along the banks up onto the streets behind a dollar tree, and we found her still breathing. Dad said you pushed him over to the side against a nest of Montezuma cypress roots. He climbed, met my mom, now there's me. Rain, river, ocean, stream. When Tia bought me bags of oranges from the valley on our trips to visit Abuelita, Wella said, your water fed the fruit, the ocean burst into waves when I crushed the pulp between my teeth. I saw her tossed on her side, red fingernails, scars softened, lips still touched with pink, hands and arms hanging off the edge of grandma's sheets I inherited, her hair soaked in you after a cold bath. Rain, river, ocean, stream, run beside me until my legs tire, then take me with you carry me home where I don't have to run anymore. After he made me, I woke up to dry mocos and tears of river on my shirt and water in a puddle of ocean with a fistful of flood and stream dripping out the edges of my palms. When the cold came, you river swelled, silenced, told the people to leave your waters that you would freeze around them. Rain, river, ocean, stream, run beside me until my legs tire. Then take me with you home, carry me home where I don't have to run anymore. Just add water and it will grow into whatever you want, she said. I put the little pink capsule in my pocket and rushed home, hoping it would grow into a cute girlfriend or invisible cloak. When the rain came, I did too, opened by the undertow, sprayed out into the ocean. I drove four and a half hours to see you, Laguna, mi madre. But when I got there, 
I met a girl and she felt just as good on my skin. Water, I asked quietly because I didn't want my friends tanning on the sand to question me. Water, the curandera said to come to you and ask you to take this memory of him away. The water had already come up to my belly button and I started to pee. Water, wash his taste away from my mouth, I asked, and you did, and he drowned. Back then when we saw Sombrero float by, Rossi and I, we laughed, made up stories about how the panadero must have let their hat fly off their head. We didn't know. When her body landed on the river, her brown hair floated to the surface, took a lick of azure stained sky and painted ribbons of silver and blue ringlets around each of her fingers and toes to hold her afloat as she goes. Rain, river, ocean, stream, run beside me until my legs tire, then take me with you, carry me home where I don't have to run anymore. There's nothing concrete about water, I said. Only movement, melting, freezing, floating, expanding, running. If you want to understand me, understand water. I don't get it, she said. You won't, I think to myself. I don't even get me sometimes. I need to go to the water, she said, and left. She walked on the Mexican side of the river, chased Unita flowers. Their hats swayed back and forth with the wind. She pretended they were people at first, dancing, then used the spit from her tongue to stick the petals to her fingernails. When I used to see bodies in the river, she said, I used to think that the river had taken them home. All she knows how to do in the kitchen is boil water for Thea Mott. And the others laughed around the kitchen table. She was doing her best. And the water for the tea was the best she could do for herself at the time. It's cause I'm a water baby. And my ex looked at me with dry creases between their eyes. I don't wanna dry up like you, I said. And we broke up. Rain, river, ocean, stream, run beside me until my legs tire. Take me with you, carry me home, where I don't have to run anymore. Six, eight ounce glasses of water, the doctor said. Mija, six or eight glasses of water? The doctor repeated herself again. No, she said, and wagged her finger at Mama Grande. Six, eight ounces of water. Water? I do that already, mija. Mama Grande was confused. Get me a glass of water, she ordered. River flowing through her open body, out into the bay. Take her to Laguna Madre. Wake her, shake her, quake her, quench her. But don't ask her to stay. Rain, river, ocean, stream, run beside me until my legs tire. Take me with you carry me home where I don't have to run anymore.
Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. If you're just tuning in, uh, thank you for spending your Saturday night or a little bit of your Saturday night with us. We really appreciate it. Um, tonight is Agua y Poesia, and I'm just super happy. And um, I don't know, it's just a very special night for me personally. We have a very special surprise for you all. Uh, Lia La Novia Sirena, she is going to be live, performing live uh, for us in a little bit. So I'm super thrilled. But I want to introduce our next poet. Our next poet is Carmen Tafoya. She's an internationally acclaimed Chicana writer from San Antonio, Texas, and professor emerita of bicultural bilingual studies at the University of Texas at San Antonio. Tafoya served as a poet laureate of San Antonio from 2012 to 2014 and was named the poet laureate of Texas from um, 2015 to 2016. Tafoya has written more than 30 books and won multiple literary, liter, literary awards. She is one of the most highly anthologized Chicana authors in the United States with her work appearing in more than 300 anthologies. So she's uh, Carmen Tafoya. Hi, I'm Carmen Tafoya, and I wrote this poem for Azul's very special show, Agua y Poesia. It's a blend of two previous poems, a mestizaje, if you will, of the poems Floricanto al Agua, which was written uh, for the water protectors. Uh, with a very timely struggle in our very recent history, and still. And another poem, River Music, about the water that flows right through the heart of San Antonio, Texas. Uh, my city, my place of origin, and, and my pueblo. Um, <clears throat> and it has some other relevant pieces in it that were written specifically for Agua y Poesia. So let me share with you this medley poem called The Music of Water. <clears throat> agua, agua dulce, waterfall of life, singing rain shower, bloom of promise, blessed blood flow of our planet, agua, agua dulce. Those who know her, dressed in seeds and prayers and cleansed by sacred copal, whisper to her in melodies of respeto for the joy-drenched miracle of life. The guardians of water stand tall against bullets, threats, corporations, corruption, stand tall against the tear gas and the clubs. Water protectors, guardians of la gente, stand firm feet on earth and hearts to sky to save the water. Agua dulce, water protectors, por favor, please continue standing tall. Agua dulce flows like honey through the tongue of Maria Antonieta Berriozabal, warrior of La Politica, standing unafraid, speaking for the truth, speaking for the people, speaking words of wisdom. It's about the water. It will always be all about the water. Maria, Maria, por favor, please continue speaking. It trills through the poetry of Rosa Maria Catacalos, channeling history through her soul, people's lives, and stories, agua dulce flowing through each sweet note of each rhythmic line. They came for the water, she says, sank hand and tool into soil where the bubble of springs gave off hope, the song of the water. Rosa Maria, por favor, please continue writing. It hums, for we are the water, and it is us reflecting centuries, voices, histories before the histories any of us remember. It flows through us, cleanses us, makes us pure, like Madre Agua, Espíritu de Vida. Yes, it hums through the lightest rain, trickles in the creeks, 
cries like thunderstorms, laughs like waterfalls, and roars like oceans. Awa, awa dulce, sweet water symphony of our spirit birth, rippling down our throats like some cool healing magic. You bless us in our rituals, baptize us, feed us, quench us, rebirth us, and swirl into all the rivers of our pueblos and into my river, curving into calido colors, mirrored against its own marbled movement. This stream has always sprung simply, smoothly from the heart of song, making soft melodies ring from the leaves, from mission bells and the tender voices of children who play here between the centuries rippling in and out of laughter. Strong as silt, they stay unchanged, unweakened even by the years, their large dark eyes still staring boldly, begging miracles of this green liquid gem that washes quiet through city's soul, healing, hearing, hoping, glowing, like my pueblo's shining Christmas lights, like its joyous mariachi soul, its Indian heartbeat, medicine drum, where Agua Dulce brings this river music, this song of harmony, its spirit breath dancing, peaceful, flowing, strong, reflecting the very rhythm in my veins, the very rhythm of life.
Hi there. Um, so here we are, we're back. And this is a moment where I would like you to um, welcome. I know we're not live live, but we are in a way. So um, to welcome this beautiful friend. Her name is Leah, La Novia Sirena Garcia. Her work is amazing in so many ways. And, and she um, is better known as La Novia Sirena. She is a trans activist and performer whose public interventions insist on reflecting on the emotional charges that bind us. Um, one of her performances was presented at the uh, MUAC, and it was called Affective Encounters, or Encuentros Afectivos. And there were a series of public performances through which Leah invited the audience to think about sexuality, intimacy, and social change. Uh, she's live with us today, tonight. So um, she's going to read first in Spanish. And then she's going to read in English. So um, we're going to welcome her. Bienvenida, querida Lía. Hola, hermosa, ¿cómo estás? Buenas Muy noches, bien, preciosa. Gracias uh, por estar. Good night to everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me to this event. I'm very happy and I want to say thank you to my beautiful sister, Azul, for inviting me to this event. I'm very happy. Y thank you, thank you, thank you. Gracias por abrirme las puertas de este espacio. Estoy muy feliz. Gracias a ti, Lía, preciosa. Eh, bueno, lo que les voy a leer es un fragmento de un ensayo que yo escribí para un libro que se llama Tsunami. Y mi ensayo se llama Amare sobreviviremos, metáforas del dolor trans. Eh, I'm going to read a part of an ensayo that I eh, wrote for a book called Tsunami, and the Isai called, and Azul, please, can you help me to translate the title of my Isai? Yes. ¿Cómo se llama, mi amor? Amares sobreviviremos, metáforas del dolor trans. Uh, the love we will survive, metaphors of trans love, más o menos. Okay, and I'm going to read uh, two parts of the inside for, for everybody here. And thank you very much. Okay, uh, and it says, um, Este país en el que vivo, mi tierra, mi agua, México, es un país que se encuentra en guerra con nosotras las mujeres trans. Cada día derramo lágrimas, océano, cuando llegan a mí los nombres de mis hermanas asesinadas en un territorio invadido por el machismo, en un territorio invadido por el odio transfóbico que acecha nuestros espacios y se lleva nuestras vidas, sueños, posibilidades y memorias. Sin embargo, no hemos perdido a ninguna, las hemos encontrado. Esto significa que sus voces aún retumban en nuestra piel, el territorio, órgano más grande y visible del cuerpo, tanto como nuestras caricias, tanto como el deseo convertido en agua de gritar la contrahistoria de todas aquellas y decir que sí, que ellas pudieron detener las manos de sus agresores con fuerza y escapar corriendo sin mirar atrás para continuar su camino y convertirse en nombre, nombre que se nombra, Alesa, Itzel, Valeria, Cheva, Paola, Gloria, Itzayana, Elizabeth, Patricia, María, Jacqueline, Teresa, Malena, y una y otra y la otra, las otras y ella y ellas, todas nosotras, juntas. This country in which I live, my land, my water, Mexico, is a country who is at war with us, trans women. Every day I shed ocean tears when the names of my sisters murdered in an invade territory driven by machismo and transphobic hatred that haunts our other spaces and takes our lives, dreams, possibilities, and memories. However, we have not lost any of them. We have found them. This means that their voices still echo on our skin, the most largest and most visible organ territory of our bodies, as well as our caresses as much as the desire turned into water to shout 
the counter story of all those and say yes, that they could stop the hands of his aggressors with force and escape running without my go back to continue on your way and become a name, name that is named. Alessa, Itzel, Valeria, Cheva, Paola, Gloria, Isayana, Elizabeth, Patricia, Maria, Jacqueline, Teresa, Malena, and one and another, and the other and the others, and her and them all, we together. Okay, the next part is, Soy una mujer de agua, dicen mis ancestras. Hija de Oshun, la madre de todos los ríos que corren, fluyen y mueren convirtiéndose en mar. Agua, yema ya. Kai, 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 yema ya oloyo. Kai, 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 hace su oloyo. El agua es mi refugio contra todas las tristezas y todas las rabias, porque ahí me siento libre. Todo fluye en ella como dentro de mi cuerpo y mi género. Todo es transparente como yo y mis hermanas, que damos la cara en nuestro día a día a pesar del insulto y el escarnio por fugarnos de las normas impuestas por el patriarcado colonial. El agua algunas veces es turbia, como el tornado que siento cuando me hacen sentir que no pertenezco, cuando me hacen sentir que el mundo no es para cuerpos como el mío y que mis pasos se traducen en un riesgo que me puede hacer no regresar nunca más a mi casa. El agua, todo me lo da. Contracorriente, escuchar las corrientes frías y cálidas, y sobre todo, enfrentar las olas grandes que me han enseñado que para cruzarlas hay que sumergirse hondo, o bien, nadar hacia ellas. El agua ha sido mi casa desde pequeña. Allí aprendí a mirar todo mi cuerpo y abrazarlo con ternura, abierto para desnudarme, abierto para dejarme caer, a descubrir el mundo del abajo, donde están las raíces, y sobre todo, a no tenerle miedo al abismo, por más oscuro que sea, porque para hacer abismo hay que tragar luz. I am a woman of water, my ancestors say, daughter of Oshun, the mother of all rivers that run, flow, and die to become true in himself into the sea. Water, Yemaya. The water is my refuge against all the sadness and all the rage because there I feel free. Everything flows in here, like inside my body and my gender. Everything is transparent, like me and my sisters, who give the face in our day to day, despite the insult and derision by free from the norms imposed by the colonial patriarchy. Sometimes water, it's cloudy, like the tornado that I feel when they make me feel that I don't belong, that the world is not for body like mine, and that my steps translates into a risk that I can make me never go home again. Water, all swimming gives it to me against the current, listen to the cold and warm currents, Above all, face the big waves that have taught me that to cross in them, you have to dive deep or swim towards them. Water has been my home since I was little. That's where I learned to look my whole body and hug it tenderly, open to undress, to let myself fall, to discover the world below, where they are the roots, and above all not to be afraid of the abyss for more dark it may be. Because to be an abyss, you have to swallow light. Y finalmente, el último fragmento pequeño que quiero leerles es el siguiente. Cuando cumplí 15 años, mi voz comenzó a cambiar. Se hizo más grave, muy parecida a la de mi padre y a la de mi hermano. Y aunque para mí fue raro y doloroso, porque no me gustaba ese cambio tan repentino, no tenía las herramientas para contradecirlo. Mi voz es mi casa, pero para hacerla mi casa, tuve que abrazarla. Esta es una voz muy grave, que cuando sale en mi hablar cotidiano, hace que las personas me miren con cara de confusión. Morbo, que comiencen a secretearse entre ellas y que incluso me llamen como un hombre, a pesar de que mi apariencia dice todo lo contrario. Es un momento donde acontecen simultaneidades, 
entre la revelación política y el riesgo que implica parecer, porque soy vista como lo que quiero que miren, una sirena trans, un cuerpo ambiguo, una mujer de voz grave entre el agua y el aire, entre cola de pescado y torso de mujer, una voz que escapa de lo normativo, pero tengo que decirles que también es muy peligroso por todo lo que podría ocurrir. La mirada de los hombres es confrontadora. Siempre lidiar con ella nos agota, nos chupa la energía y nos hace sentir despojadas de nuestros cuerpos desde sus miradas. ¿Quién puede escuchar la voz de una sirena y dejarse acariciar por el deseo de morir ahogado en el mar de la transformación? When I turned 15, my voice started to change, became more serious, much like my father's and my brother's. And also for me, it was strange and painful because I liked that sudden change. I didn't have the tools to contradict it. My voice is my home, but to make it my home, I had to hug, hug her. This is a very deep voice that when comes out in my everyday speech makes people look at me with a confused face morbid, that they begin to see great between them, and that they even call me in masculine despite that my appearance says the opposite. It is a moment where simultaneities occur between the political unveiling and the risk involved in appearing, because I am seen as what I want you to see, a trans woman, an ambiguous body like a mermaid, a woman with a deep voice that escape the normative but I have to tell them that it is also very dangerous for all that, that it could occur. The look of men is confrontational, always dealing with it exhausts us, sucks our, our energy and make us feel stripped of our bodies from their looks. Who wants to hear the voice of the mermaid? Who wants to die with this voice? Who wants to die in the sea? Thank you very much. I'm, I'm Lia Garcia, La Novia Sirena. Thank you, Azul, for inviting me. And thank you for the audience, for the patience with my English, because I am not so good. Um, for me, reading a spoken word in English is more difficult than in Spanish. But uh, I, I know that you feel me. Maybe you don't understand some words, but I know that you feel my energy. And thank you very much for hearing the voice of this mermaid. And thank you to my sister, Azul. I love you, my dear. I love you too, sister. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you for, for reading and for, for being with us. Te quiero mucho, Lía. Muchas gracias. Ciao. Ciao. We're going to go to the next song. And this one is actually dedicated to Lía. And it's called La Petenera Negra. Uh, gracias. Thank you.
one more time, thank you so much to Leah and her beautiful presence. Um, knowing Leah has been a blessing. Uh, I hadn't heard, I hadn't read her work, and um, her work is actually going to be published. Um, or the the idea is that her work, or the or it's you know the the um, publishing house, her publishing house is working in. Uh, translating that book and making it available um, in English, and that book is amazing. Her book, uh, she she's uh, one of the artists from um, a book called Tsunami, and um, our next poet is Emi Perez. Emi Perez is a Chicanx poet and writer, originally from Santa Ana, California. She was a recipient of a National Endowment for the Arts Poetry Fellowship in, in 2017. She has lived in borderlands of Texas since 2000, where she has taught creative writing in college and MFA programs, as well as in detention facilities and as part of social justice projects. Her latest collective is Poets Against the Border Wall. She is also a fellow 2010 to 2012 and organizing committee member of Canto Mundo. And it is a longtime member of Macondo Writers Workshop. Is, uh, here we have Emi Perez. <laughs> El valle del pájaro vente bello amarillo y del río azul verde. El valle donde la gente naranja nació en una fábrica plantada en un barrio. El DDT y el arsénico todavía en el suelo y en la sangre. El valle donde estoy aprendiendo como amar asombrada. El valle de los recién estrenados muros fronterizos, paredes divisorias, concreto, barras de contención, seguridad emocional para aquellos que nunca han tocado el agua de este río. El valle donde somos testigos con todos nuestros sentidos. Algunas veces las palabras son tragadas por los helicópteros y huracanes. El valle de periquitos verdes en la calle 10, gatos, montesas y fantasmas de ocelotes en el monte, cerca de Boca Chica, Playa Bagdad, donde el río refresca las garzas azules, niñas, niños, pescadores, pescadoras en su camino al golfo. Arbustos de hojas de cepillo enrojeciendo en un lugar donde la primavera viene con frecuencia con un poco de agua y todavía con un florecimiento pronunciado en febrero y marzo. Los cactus dando flores fuchsia cerca del agua salada y la tortuga de Texas tan chingonamente ancestral en la laguna atascosa, caminando en el viento, como nosotros caminamos en el viento, en la primavera, pensando en el deseo. El valle donde mis toronjas son orgánicas y las grandes hormigas rojas consumen cada uno de los pedacitos de pulpa del color blanco durazno que quedan cuando algunas herrebundas bellas toronjas caen sobre el suelo y con un chupaoyo para los pájaros. El valle donde cada toronja en mi patio trasero es un milagro de vida. El valle donde soy capaz de aprender, aprender de personas como ustedes que viven sus vidas para amar. The river on our face. With the Rio Grande Bravo in our face, this river at its mouth, at its source, with you at its source, its sources, 
with you at the snow, the evergreens, the million earth holes of water, emerging emerald snakes, La Maestra's grave with this river on our face. Neon green Annalie swells its throat pink white, the river on its face. Ocelots hunt under six foot shrub canopies with the drive of the continental divide with the pool of tributaries in their limbs. Chicharras whining in the shade, rivers in their timbles, females laying eggs in branches. The young border patrol officer flashes sirens daily, lifts his gun with the river on his face. Upriver, Chihuahua desert ancestors, adobe bricks stand up, crumble down with the river on our face. You said you love the river on my face. You said headwaters, the source, El Rio Grande rises from its source, saw the lines around our mouths, saw adobe brick lines exposed. Monsoon season granizo pelting the facades, at its source in my mouth, adobe mud bricks in my mouth, the earth holes, the sources, the snow, avalanches, granizo, Rio Conchos de Mexico, grandmother's Cueva de la Olla at our face, Taramara, Raramuri, tidal confluences in our face. Relatives disappear, die detained, with tributaries of many rivers on their face. In Ciudad Juarez, a mother hoped her missing daughter married a rich American with the river far away. Constant helicopters finding heat with the river as the source. To the west, crossers lift the tortilla curtain, walk deserts without water on their face. Guanajuato ancestors cross through Cali with mirages in their face. While well, I shower daily with El Valle river water on my face, Thank you and kiss you daily, Julia de Burgos, with the Rio Grande de Luisa, Puerto Rico in your face. Julia, I can now speak of hurricanes and being a dog at someone's feet. I remember El Paso's Inca doves, burrowing owls in the morning, barn owls and El Valle cemeteries, great horned owl and mockingbirds, Harris hawks and paraques, vecinos carrying signs to communities, no al muro, segundo barrio no se vende, with the river on their face. A daughter and mother want their ashes scattered at Boca Chica, the river's mouth, the end, the start, another source, crabs collapsing into bullets bursting out of holes, Carrizo, Bogambilia, seeds, petals, paper, rose, raspas, the mouth, the eddies, the tributaries, the flow, Rio Conchos de Mexico, the snow, granizo, the pelts, the sources rising the confluence of people and God, tortugas, ribbon snakes in Roma, pigs and piglets jumping from banks with the river on their face. You can hear roosters crowing across the water in Miguel Aleman. Hurricanes disturb unsettled graves with the river in our face. You said you don't want archaic chains lowering you loudly with obvious labor six feet in. You want to hear the cool chachalacas with the river on their legs flapping from ebano to ebano. El chalan, the ropes, the pole over green water under blue sky to Diaz Ordaz. I want to hear parrots, sable palms try again with the river on our face. I want no medicine, no ambition with the river on my face. I used to love you with the river on my face. I still love you when the river's on my face. I made a foot deep grave with the river on my face. I loved other rivers with El Rio Grande Bravo on my face. I want to Oxbow Lake in this place where children still speak and lose multiple tongues, in this place where we still lose and grow forked tongues. This place where white herons hunt and drink in resacas. This place with the river in its pipes, in its lungs, 
in our face. We're getting closer to the end. We have um, three more beautiful poets. Um, the next one is uh, Maria Concepcion Bautista Vasquez. She is a Mayan Tzotzil poet and a visual artist from Wixtan, Chiapas. She attended the Mayan University in Chiapas and received a degree in pedagogy. She's also a, she has a master's in human rights. She is a fellow of the National Fund of Culture and Arts called Fonca. Art is her way of preserving the collective memory of her community. She um, comments on the indigenous cultural conservation and human rights protection through her work in all forms of media. She draws inspiration from the surrounding environment, cultures, worldviews, so social themes, and views her work as a form of protest against the inequities faced by indigenous people in Chiapas. Bautista Vasquez's most recent work is the 2017 collection Espíritu de la Naturaleza, published by Celali, Centro de Estatal de Lenguas, Arte y Literatura Indígena. Quiero agradecer la invitación de las organizadoras para participar en este festival. Voy a leer algunos poemas escritos en Tzotzil y en español. Mm. 
Lu Bixali te etike. Tascuchel ya nalike. Schels baik tayolon satkakal. Te alturas nu, te almanzano. Shviletik staki ya nalik. Uchal mutetik ta te etik. Tascobik, shboktalil te pentik. Los árboles se han cansado de cargar sus hojas. Bajo los ojos del sol, el árbol de durazno, el manzano, sus hojas secas vuelan como pájaros en la arboleda. En sus ramas brotan las mariposas. Humus. Jujun saco velocil, spat bellontón, slok bel cacal. Skeloglit se ve. Skalbes bel skoyontón, tashchut. Dite la gil chelale. Chuleles membel. Skushonton. Taskop. Skehogmut. C. Sikil y Kliman. Skelog chanak un enzem. Skucho. Taskom yurenal. Kutsi un enzem. Kucho. Chuk smolkin. Skopun y Kliman. Niña. Fría neblina vigila el caminar de la niña. En sus brazos carga su infancia, niña cargadora de leña, cargadora de agua. Con su viejo cántaro saluda la mañana. Tsunum. Tasikil y Klimán, Tayanal, Nichimarukum, Sloktasat, Li Tsunni. Skopon, Tujumal, Pechpijol, Ants. Colibrí. En el fresco rocío, en los pétalos del lirio, dibuja su rostro el colibrí. Saluda a la mujer de hermosas trenzas. O. Kanchkuch atzujulal kuchalmut. Kanchkuch ot tasboch membelil u. Chkuch ojo balakom youn kuchan chulel. Chico. A Kuslejal. Agua. Quiero beber tu rocío como ave. Quiero beberte en la jícara de la abuela luna. Beber el efluvio de tus manos que alimentan mi espíritu. Alas de agua. Germen de vida. Terminaré leyendo este último poema. Bacnaval. Lukubs bon halbil, scholob membelil u, tayolon lisliso, las hokan kuchel alku, tasti binahel, as belal hech balumil, as bel, scholionton molme eletik. Arco iris, tejido de siete colores del arte de la abuela luna, bajo la llovizna, lo atendido como arco. En la puerta del cielo, camino al mundo paralelo, en la memoria de ancianos y ancianas.
Hey again. So, con toda la emoción, all the excitement, uh, I forgot to mention that I'm sure some of you recognize that we were able to record the music back at the Esperanza, uh, some of it or most of it, and that was really exciting for each one of us. Um, Andrew and I were texting each other like, yeah, it's going to be great, you know, it, and, and it was. It was, uh, it was almost like normal. It felt kind of like a rehearsal, you know, like, like we missed you, we miss you guys. Um, and we're almost at the end. This definitely has been a challenge, a good challenge for me because it, it made me think um, differently about, you know, about events. Although I try to kind of weave the music within the work of the poets and kind of continuing that flow. Uh, and it, it was, it's been a challenge and I like it. I welcome it and I hope that we all do it again. Um, next, we have Andrea Bokev Sanderson. She is an amazing person. She's um, San Antonio, Texas Poet Laureate, 2020 to 2023. She performs as Bokev in her hometown of San Antonio, Texas. Watching her perform, the, world, the word hero comes to mind, and not hero for the sake of just skill but for her work in her community. Sanderson teaches poetry workshops, mentors, builds up and encourages artists to pursue their art and gives them platforms to showcase their talent. Sanderson's interest in other people's art and artistic development became a passion of hers and she started curating her own shows and creating platforms for other artists to own their craft by hosting open mics. This is uh, from the San Antonio Current uh, 2018. And uh, here is our very own uh, Paul Laurette. to say and I talk to the river she answered me in ways I once asked the water do you recognize me my whole body a river frame that flows and ripples deep within coursing to currents of beauty, liquid hearth, gurgling with inseparable droplets and always inviting, salted, fresh, full and rushing with life, never damned or receding and certainly never stagnant. My movement, a fluid feminine rhythm, trickling or hasty through valleys and mountains, I wind. I am no pond, yet at times I resemble an ocean. I once asked the water, do you recognize me? I sat still, waited for an answer. All I saw was my reflection in the flux and waves, in the flux and waves. I to the river I had so much to say and I talked to the river she answered me in words
I'm super excited because in a little bit we're going to have a talk live with Madre Santa Ibanez and um, she will be on right after our last guest. And that song is called La Hija de Cuatlicue. It's a song that I uh, wrote especially for tonight's show. Um, all the inspiration of these sisters, todas estas hermanas, um, came together and it just came into a song. Um, and our last amazing guest, poet guest, is um, Conchi. She was born in San Cristóbal de las Casas, Chiapas, in a journalistic home. She has a degree in human rights, and through her activism and jour journalistic career, Conchi fought against injustices for decades. But after years of abuse and persecution, she was forced to live in anon anonymity. Poetry rescued her from the journalistic life. Conchi has been a cultural wanderer since then. Although Conchi didn't use her writing voice for 30 years in poetry, words never abandoned her. So this is the work of nuestra querida hermana, Conchi. Agua pasa por mi casa, cate de mi corazón. Agua brota de mis ojos y mata mi corazón. Sí se puede llorar, sí, sí se puede. 75% de nuestro cuerpo es agua. No ha de pasarnos nada si perdemos alguna gota de lágrimas. A esa lagrimita temerosa que busca la ventana y que quisiera unirse a la llovizna de allá afuera, la dejaré salir. Pero mañana, porque esa lagrimita poca cosa con apariencia como de inocente. Presiento que es la punta de un torrente que estallará furiosa si dejo que se escape de repente. Mejor que se mantenga entretenida, observando la lluvia de allá afuera, que si la dejo hacer lo que quisiera, en su cauce mortal, se irá a mí. de la ventana se pega la nostalgia a la recuerdos y silencios entrelazan la vida va dejando su agonía y danza en la quietud de su tonada Jugando a ver llover los corazones, lograr florecer las lágrimas y el dolor. Va perfumando lento los rincones, gigante el vacío entre los brazos, que nace la inquietud de los fracasos e imprime su desierto sin razones Pero apaga la erupción del deseo desnuda todo aquello que fue cierto y erosión aquello que no fue ver llover diluye la emoción de haber sentido levanta la caída en el camino y presagia un poema al ver llover las lágrimas no son agua solamente Brota desde el manantial oscuro que cada quien guarda en su propio paraíso perdido. Desde ahí suben y devoran el corazón que está herido, mientras lo salan para embalsamarlo. 
para hacer presente el sabor amargo de su sal. Invaden los ojos, borran a las estrellas y su brillo, así nublan la vista y se oscurece todo. Ciegan con esa tenue bruma de gris o nitro senocia, la cera. Oradan las mejillas y se sombrece el mundo. Naufraga sin la vida dentro de un mar profundo, sin playa la vista. Las lágrimas no son agua solamente. Son las mensajeras de lo que nos muere. Y se hacen cómplices en los instantes negros de lo que nos mata. Cuando se desliza por toda nuestra vida. Lento. Thank you all so much if you're still with us. Um, I thank you again for spending some of your night with us. And uh, I'm super excited. We have our next and final guest. She um, is going to talk to us about different things and sort of land this topic of, of water in, in hopefully a perspective that would make you question some of the things that you can do, some of the ways that you can get involved. And her name is Madeleine Santibáñez. She is a Southwest Folklife Alliance Fellow. 
She's a uh, she's an abolitionist and veteran community organizer, educator, and danzante of Purépecha descent. She has over 10 years experience developing and implementing youth participatory action research, cultural rites of passage, and teen pregnancy prevention programming in the occupied territories of Yanawana, San Antonio, Texas. She is currently the youth development specialist at the Martinez Street Women's Center and serves on the board of Southwest Workers Union and Society of Native Nations. Her political education was cultivated on the front lines of largest socialist movement in the Americas, Landless People's Movement Brazil. And her leadership is rooted in her dedication to the preservation of indigenous epistemologies and the revitalization of generational resilience. And a pantlera by heart, her passion is to cultivate transnational exchanges inspired by a generation of migration across the borderlands and the global resistance against capitalism. Mi querida Made, welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. Muchas gracias. Hola, mucho gusto. Uh, es un placer estar aquí. It's an honor to be here. Um, you know, not only representing myself, but my familia and my community here in San Antonio and um, all the, you know, uh, you know, all, all the indigenous people that that you know don't don't recognize these arbitrary colonial borders. Entonces, es un placer estar aquí con ustedes. Gracias. Muchísimas gracias. Um, so, ya, ya puedo comenzar. Sí, <laughs> so let me, um, let me also say, because, you know, I mean, you, you're so many things that one of the things that I, I would like to also say is that, you know, can you tell us a bit about the, the, what you do in school so that we can also understand that side of you that is very, very interesting. Sure. Um, so I'm getting my degree in mathematics um, from the te uh, Texas A&M uh, San Antonio, and I'm also enrolled in courses within the Water Resources Institute, uh, which is the first of its kind um, here in, in Texas, um, because water is one of the biggest resources in the world. Um, you know, and and as a water protector myself, I felt the need to stay informed on you know what what is happening you know around water uh, privatization and what we're doing um, to conserve this water for future generations. And as a um, you know an organizer and a mathematician, you know it, it it informs you know how how societies around the world you know. Uh, relate to each other, to their environment, um, and to our resources. Entonces, um, I my approach to this research is to um, really connect the dots between, um, you know, the indigenous epistemologies um, and um, water conservation, which is something that is uh, foundational to our our philosophy, you know, and and our and our way of life. It's it's uh, it's our responsibility, you know, as caretakers of this land, to um, take space and make space within these um, institutions to amplify our voices, to amplify this um, this lucha, que es, uh, you know, que es, es para, it's for everyone, you know, including um, our, those that are yet to come, you know, and so that's you know I'm trying to bring all that in and and you know, give something back for our future generations to, to, to carry on. It's, it's beautiful. It's an honor. It's amazing. You're amazing. I'm going to, um, I'm going to lower my, my microphone so that you can, you know, there's no feedback. Sure. Awesome. So I wanted to begin, um, by acknowledging, you know, the, the lands that, that we were on, you know, the occupied territories of, um, of Yanawana, you know, in the Somisec uh, territories of the Carrizo Come Crudo and the Coahuiltecan um, tribes of Texas, um, and just begin by acknowledging those ancestors, you know, those guardians of these waters, of these lands, and um, just begin by, you know, thanking each and every one of y'all for your time. This water, water is a a, a big topic, um, and a uh, you know, very, very tricky one as we live in a capitalist society that, 
you know, tends to uh, commodify our resources uh, for profit. And, um, you know, it's something that we've been assimilated into and have learned behaviors that have, um, you know, that, that don't align with the natural law um, of, you know, of like, of, of water conservation, right? As, uh, you know, as an indigenous person, my family is from Michoacan and um, we're fish people. That we, we live, we survive off of um, the, our rivers and um, we depend on, on the, aquatic, um, the, the, the aquatic system to provide for us. Y para nosotros, el agua es sagrada, water is life. It's what gives us, you know, our ability to, you know, walk and work and love and, and play. And so um, these teachings are, are what ground me in, in this work. And it's something that um, I wanted to share with, with our community, Oi, you know, that um, water is life is, is something that was coined by the, uh, the movement in um, North Dakota you know, when the, our, our Sioux Lakota brothers and sisters were fighting the, um, the pipeline that was going to run through their ancestral territories and, and contaminate um, the river, right? That, that feeds millions of people. And so um, Water is Life is, is, is a call to action, right? It's also a, um, a, an indigenous epistemology, verdad? Something that has has been taught to us from one generation to the next, right? And um, now, you know, more, more recently with um, research around how the elements um, respond to human interaction, um, you know, we, 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 we come to, to, you know, prove what our ancestors have always, always known, you know, which is that water has memory, you know, and, and depending on how we treat the water, the energy that we project onto the water, it can change its molecular structure to um, be that of, um, you know, chaos or of, um, you know, uh, meticulous, like calculated, like uh, crystallization and, and beauty. And so um, water has memory is also a, a teaching that, that has been proven now, you know, by research. Dr. Imoto from from Japan has, um, you know, conducted research, and mathematicians now are trying to decipher, you know, like how do we like how do we calculate this molecular change in our water? And that's where you know some of my professors are are looking at um, calculating that change using partial differential equations, you know. And um, these teachings are not. Um, you know, it's not something that we learn in school, in traditional uh, schooling, and um, uh, and it, but those teachings are what give life to this this movement that I'm a part of, of protecting our water, of praying with our water, and of you know like fighting to um, to preserve it for our future generations because that water holds ancestral memory that connects us to the land. And essentially to ourselves, um, so it's um, it's you know, you know I, I wanted to to open up with those teachings because um, we can talk about water conservation, you know, all day, you know, of of not using um, single use plastics or making sure that you water your garden, you know, uh, at the certain times depending on our, the level of our aquifer. But it really is um, necessary for us to embody these values of, you know, living in harmony with our environment, of recognizing our sacred interdependence, um, our sacred interconnectedness, and how we, how our actions have an impact on, on, um, on our surroundings and to each other, and um, moving, learning about water law in Texas and the history of privatization um, throughout these territories, you know, it was really um, eye-opening because um, Texas has a history of, um, you know, of creating laws and policies that protect landowners, you know, and, and that protect uh, the resources underneath their land um, as, as property, right? Which is why, 
now I say the commodification of this property, the objectification of our resources um, has been something that's been, you know, imposed on us, right? Texas is over 90% privately owned and that's not by any of, you know, <laughs> native people of these, of these lands or, you know, people of color. And, and if you do have land, you might be familiar with the laws that give you the right to use um, the groundwater, right, at your, at your disposal, um, no matter how much it impacts your neighbor's well or the aquifer. And um, these laws literally place profit over, over our resources and essentially over the people because without this water, um, we wouldn't be here today. And um, we, you know, Texas is in a fight, right, to try to, you know, define what waters are, are usable for certain things and what waters are not and what water, you know, what they recognize and define as water, you know, and, and that for us is really strange because, you know, it's all this, it's all the same water, you know, and it's, it's the water that um, our ancestors thousands of years ago also, you know, um, drank. Right, that, that water is ancient. And um, so, and for us as indigenous people, all water is sacred. You know, that's, it doesn't matter, you know, where it's located or, you know, uh, what it's being used for, it's, it's sacred. And, um, you know, this, this movement for, for water conservation, like I said, it, it requires a deep embodiment, right? Of realigning our, our values and not compromising um, those things for our own comfort, our own, um, you know, like selfish, like, you know, self, like selfish, like needs, verdad? Um, and um, that's going to require a culture shift, verdad? Porque it's all based on supply and demand, right? right? If we don't, if we don't demand um, water, right? If we, if we conserve uh, more and use less, you know, when we're taking showers or we're watering our plants or we're, um, you know, like uh, washing our dishes or brushing our teeth, uh, we, it, it requires us to be more mindful, right? And that's hard to talk about when we're talking about uh, people of color, you know, um, who have compounded generational trauma, right? Like how can you tell someone to, you know, be present and aware of their actions and mindful of their uh, water consumption if they're trying, you know, they're, they're busy trying to like pay their survive. bills or yeah. survive, exactly. Um, so that's, um, uh, in, in talking to Asul at the beginning of this, like I, I, I was really passionate about, you know, highlighting the, the water laws in Texas, right? And like, what can we do as residents, you know, to make sure that um, we're, we're helping uh, move the needle towards like towards sustainability what about for, for future generations. And um, the reality is, is that we have to, we have to start um, advocating at, at the, you know, at the, at the county level, at the state level, and making sure that we um, stay informed on what policies um, our representatives are, are passing and holding them accountable to, um, to what you know our community needs, and with with uh, Texas, you know our population is skyrocketing. Right, San Antonio is one of the fastest growing cities, the second fastest growing city in the nation. We really have to, um, be, you know, just be aware, right? Our the demand for water is increasing. By the time you know we're in 2070, we're we as a as a county as a as a region in, in Texas, there's there's over twenty different conservation regions in Texas. We have to determine like where are we going to get this water because we don't have enough to supply um, the millions of people that are are going to be um, coming and residing in this area, and also take into consideration the the um, like where we're at right geologically right in between two big aquifers, that's the Trinity Aquifer to the north of us and the Carrizo Aquifer to the south of us. And we're right on top of the Edwards Aquifer, which 
you know, as we begin, as a city, begin to prioritize development and uh, begin building high rises um, above this aquifer, we're going to see a shift in, in the um, tectonic plates, right, that we, we reside in. And there's going to definitely be a canyon effect, right, where our, our landscape is going to sink, right? And so again, this is something that um, our representatives are not taking into consideration right, or maybe are not aware of, you know, that the, the impact of prioritizing development and profit um, and not, not considering the, in, the long-term effects of, of development um, and of building high rises, um, you know, so, so tall. Um, so, you know, there, there's, there's a lot to water conservation. You know, there's uh, that we can we can talk for hours about, you know, like uh, the history of that uh, of that and the legacy that came with the Spanish and English uh, colonization, right? Of of not only people but of resources, and um, and it's 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 a beautiful thing to to be a part of these spaces, but we need more, right? We need more help. We need um, people to call their representatives to stand up and show up, you know, it, at city city council meetings, right, and advocate for uh, better water laws, you know, and, and something that SAWS is um, actively engaging in is is creating a one water system, which is a holistic ap approach to water use, because obviously we're not the only ones as as residents using water, right. Um, agriculture, the agricultural industry is um, the biggest uh, water consumer in Texas, um, followed by our, our municipal water use, and then um, manufacturing, mining, livestock. Um, and again, it's supply and demand, right? It's if we, you know, contribute to um, you know the increase in, in like in meat consumption. We're going to see an increase in water water use, right? If we contribute to if we um, use up a lot of oil and gas, right, or use single use plastics, um, we're contributing to the the millions of and of gallons that these industries um, use, right, and and produce. And there's also, you know, with this with this move towards conservation. Right, for these industries, there's also this this um, this vision for like creating and reusing water, and um, or being able or or desalinating our water, our sea water, so that we can create more waste, more uh, drinkable water, right? But there's the, there comes um, reper repercussions with that as well, right? Um, the desalination plants that we have on our Gulf Coast are causing a lot more pollution. They're saving water, you know, but at the cost of, you know, our, our marine life. Wow. You know, it's, it's, we're compartmentalizing, um, you know, this, this water, uh, water recycling kind of like idea and not, you know, saying that we're, 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 we're all about water conservation, you know, but at the expense of, of the fish, you know, at the expense of the earth. At the expense of you know the the workers who have to live, who have to work in under these conditions, and so um, our our water demands you know that that come with like our consumption um, you know, our tendencies and habits is going to really de like determine you know where where we're at as a as a city as a state as a nation like you know close you know in in the next ten years. Right, it's all it's all related, and um, and it, it's all interconnected to all of these different struggles. Right, water isn't an isolated um, struggle, a fight. You know, it's not separate from the fight for um, clean air. It's not separate from the fight against climate change. And it's definitely not separate from um, our immigration fight, because the privatization of these resources and um, and, and climate change, you know, that's happening as a result of our actions is, is 
closely related to why people are having to migrate from their homelands and into our country, right? It's the same reason why we uphold rape culture, right? It's why we objectify and commodify uh, our earth and women's bodies. It's all, it's all related and, and the root of that problem is is patriarchy. <laughs> I'm gonna call it out because that exists, you know, everywhere. You know, I walk into these classrooms and we're talking about water um, resources, and but then we're not addressing the racism in the room. We're not addressing the the misogyny in the room, and and we're overlooking, um, you know, just the capitalist, um, you know, like values, you know, of of protecting um, corporations, you know, and, and um, creating policies and permits that allow them to trade off, you know, like uh, these credits of like how much uh, toxic, toxic waste can be dumped into our streams. You know, it's just, it's, it boggles me, right? To, to, to think about, you know, like how, you know, that there's a, there's a regulation to like how much you can put into our, to our water where where there should be zero, you know, like um, in my opinion, right? Zero um, like infiltration of those toxins into our environment. Um, being that Texas has over 200, well, it has about 281 springs and, and more than 63 of them have stopped flowing. We've lost over 50% of our wetlands and over half of them in Texas, right? It's not, it's, it's, this is a crisis, right? And it, it, and it's going to require a collective effort to um, make sure that as individuals, we're embodying this, this practice of, um, of sustainability, of not only living in beauty, but also protecting the beauty, right? Of, of making sure that we're holding our representatives accountable and that we're showing up to these fights, you know, and we're and that we're also um, immersing ourselves into these like spaces to learn and to make our voices heard, you know. Um, that's why I'm in those classrooms, you know. I'm <laughs> I'm the, probably the brownest person there, you know, and one of the only females in those spaces, and it can be nerve wracking. Um, but I recognize that I'm I'm there for for my people. You know, to I learn this information and, and get it back to y'all, um, get it back to the, the people on the front lines. So, Mali, um, one of the things that um, to me was very interesting uh, to hear you, you know, because we, Mali and I talked, we were going to record it, and then we were like, no, let's just do it live. So, I got to hear a little bit of, of, of this, and she has like so much information, y'all, you know, that we, you know, we we're even talking about like we should make it into like little little pieces because it's a lot, you know, it's a lot to take on in the sense like it's a good lot to take on. Like it's it's just a lot of information. Sometimes one of the things that is um, a good reminder, I guess, is, is you know, like, como estaba diciendo madre, just to start thinking, right? Because normally we're not invited too much to get involved from, um, from the corporations because naturally, you know, they don't want us to get involved. It's like, no, 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 we got it. You know, we'll take care of it. We'll make the laws. You'll get your water. Just, you know, go and work. And naturally, that's not that's not what Mada is saying. What Mada is saying is like, no, question where that water is coming from. You know, question exactly what your representatives are doing. Like, who is suffering from that? You know, the water that we're getting is coming from somewhere. Is that somewhere local? Is it affecting other communities? You know, like, let's start thinking about that and let's start thinking about obviously not buying bottled water, you know, like it is a commodity. Sometimes it's easy to just grab a bottle of water that is already packaged and ready to go. But, you know, what Mother is saying is, well, you know, if you have to at least refill it a couple of times, right? Like it, all of those things matter. Exactly. And um, it's, it's, yeah, all of those things matter, and there are there are things that that our city has um, managed to incorporate, you know, and um, and to incentivize water conservation. And it's important to highlight those as well because, um, you know, they're uh, they're really useful, right? And some of them are um, 
you know, coupons for landscaping. Right and and planting um, there's an, there's like discounts for planting indigenous species that don't require um, too much water right because they're able to adapt to this you know low like low rainfall kind of drier um, environment right there's also um, you know tools that they 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 share so that we you're able to know how much water you're consuming in your home right and you so that you're just more informed. Um, and there's a lot of incentives that SAWS has for um, for us, but though all of those are available on their website, and and that's something that you might want to explore as a family, as a as a community in your neighborhood associations, or um, even in your workplaces, around how you can um, help to uh, decrease the amount of water water use, you know, by uh, green infrastructure or, um, like Azul said, you know, not refilling your bottle. At um at a gas station, which you know is something that I use, I do when I'm going on long road trips. You know, I know gas stations let you fill up your water bottle for free. You know, and it's like yeah, like free water, um, <laughs> always. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of water saver and coupons and rebates available on the website that that'll help you not only just save water but also save money right through their like water rise pro programs and, and things like that. Um, and as, as an industry as well, right, as a co commercial customer, like if you own a business um, or even a hotel, right, there's some, there's things everyone can, can do um, to conserve water, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's all available online. And um, I think what, what my, my purpose here is to remind you all that, um, you know that of, of these of these water teachings right and and to encourage you to show up to these um boards right these regional planning boards that create these water uh sustainability plans that often are dominated by male anglo um industrial like ceos and like and business people and these um these positions on that board are all um you know non-paid you know, they're a volunteer and they, they require, you know, like time to develop this policy, but we we need we need more people, more representation, right? And that's possibly something I might consider in, in the future, um, but encouraging um, our youth also to um, make their voices heard uh, around this, to go as a family to the river, right? Even if it's to the San Antonio River or any of the beautiful rivers, in, in our, in our Yanawana territories, like the Guadalupe, the Medina, the Nueces, you know, the Comal, and and clean it up, you know, take a trash bag and and um, clean up the debris. That helps a lot, you know, to preserve the water quality um, because of the um, the animals and the fish and the bacteria that live there, right? That that are able to balance out that that uh, ecosystem. And so even cleaning up our beaches, right? Um, and even going fishing can help to contribute um, to water conservation. Actually, the, the, the sport fish restoration program, like these fishermen people have, you know, um, have created like a, a coalition and have funded many of the aquatic research programs at our university and uh, around the nation. And so I encourage you all to go fishing. 10% of any, any uh, fishing materials that you buy goes to water research and aquatic like um, systems like conservation. And so there's, you know, there's so many entry points for you to, um, to, to give back to your community. Um, but I think the, the most important is to embody a lifestyle, right? That, that is in harmony with the earth. Right to stop using single-use plastics. Right to stop the demand for um, for for items or material possessions that require uh, a lot of uh, resources. You know, um, our tech industry is one of the biggest polluters in the in the world. Right, and so um, just be more mindful of of what we consume in general. Right, and and making sure that we're we're doing everything in moderation. Right? That only to take what you what you need and not more than 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 what you need um so yeah you can 
You can also help monitor the use of water and protect its quality by by joining, you know, these teams that like the Texas Stream teams and um, you know different people that are are doing great work. Um, but I think it, it really starts at home, you know, in having these conversations with your with your child, and maybe pushing for a sixty second shower, you know, instead of the one hour bath, you know, or um, or even adopting the practice of talking to your water, right? Of, of, of praying with your water. Um, the research by Dr. Imoto is, is real, y'all. <laughs> I encourage you to, to look it up, you know, but um, that really allows us to, to recognize that, um, you know, like our impact um, and, and to, rec to, to, fo to center uh, healing in every, it, in, in, in every part of our lives, right, and making sure that we're um, that 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 we're talking to ourselves, <laughs> that we're connecting, that we're mindful of our practices, and how we um, and how we like relate to to our environment. Um, I can talk forever. No, and you know, definitely, it'll be. I think that in the future we should we should come back because um, one of the the. I mean, you have so much information that is just really interesting and and i think um if we organize a way that that you share it to us like por pedacitos so that we can also you know like take a moment and kind of think about it and um i don't know i i just i thank you so much Made, for you know making making it all like filter all of this information through you um, because it matters, and representation definitely matters um, a lot, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, muchas gracias, y gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Y te mando un abrazo muy grande. And let's just, you know, we'll, we'll definitely plan more. And if, um, if you want to drop some, some of the organizations that you may want to direct people Sure. Yeah. That'd be maybe that'd be interesting también. Y muchas gracias. Jessica Matthew, it's an honor. Um, I encourage people to reach out if they want to learn more or um, would like to get involved with any organizations doing direct action and striving to preserve our, um, you know, and protect our resources. Uh, we have, you know, I, I'm really tied to many organizations doing great work here in San Antonio. So. I'd love um, to share that with folks. Uh, so I will be posting my contact and um, some resources in the chat. Gracias. Acepta. Muchas gracias. Un abrazo. Bye, madre. Bye. <laughs>
Again, thank you all so much. If you're still watching, thank you for staying with us. I know tonight was a bit of a sh longer show. Um, I want to thank again to Emi Perez, Anel Flores, Carmen Tafoya, Maria Concepcion Bautista Vasquez, Conchi, Andrea Bocap Sanderson, um, Norma Cantu, and Lia La Novia Sirena Garcia. I also want to thank Madre Santibáñez for being with us, and naturally, mis hermanos eh, Juan Cabrera, eh, Andrew Bergman, y Emilio Álvarez. And I want to thank um, our home, the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center, who um, makes this possible. And they say, if you are enjoying this workshop brought to you by the Esperanza Peace and Justice Center, well, probably it's this event, please donate at esperanzacenter.org. Thank you again. Uh, love you all. Hopefully, we'll see each other soon. Y mañana, if you want to see it in Spanish, it'll be a different show. It'll be, some of them will be different poems. Um, and that's it. Muchísimas gracias. Mwah. <laughs>